been well. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, no, the, the end scene yeah. is probably the best scene though, because he is just sitting there with like the pile, and he just I, sticks I, his face in, and then he just shoots everyone with the machine gun, the and then he scene? dies. Well, the end scene is when he falls into the well, we just spoiled Scarface for you. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to Unwanted Opinions. I'm your host, Justin McDonald, here with co-host Matt Fisher. Scarface. <sighs> Fact checker Jesse James. Woo! Executive producer Dave Miller. And our wonderful person on the couch today, Jessica Fieldhouse. Hey. Woo! Thank you for joining us. Jessica will hop on here in the last 20, 25 minutes or so. And give her input on the movie. We Scarface. feel like we had to start explaining that to people because they would share it with the friends. Like, hey, we're gonna be on. I'm gonna be on unwanted opinions, and then their like cousins and moms and grandmas would be like, that idiot in the gray shirt <laughs> talks so much. You're always the idiot, though. Yeah, like for, yeah, for, for, for some me. reason, you're always the antagonist. Uh, that's my life in general. First of all, because your questions are aggressive. I, okay. Your tone is aggressive. Well, you look like a cop. Fair. There's probably a fourth one I'm forgetting. Just my face. Your buttons look dangerous. Well, because they're going to burst at any moment. And take shirt, an eye out. The shirt might be a little too small for me. <laughs> uh, Speaking of which, I had to put two shirts in the donation bin this morning because I put them on and I go, oh, these are midriffs now. Oh, no. Yep. And it's very easy for you to look like Baby Huey, so you gotta watch <laughs> I wore gotta these watch once, that. and then they get washed, and it's like, so never buying t-shirts from Target again. Um, why would you them. buy t-shirts from anywhere when we sell t-shirts? They had prints on them. Like the singer, formerly known? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Nice. Now I know why you them. Yeah, yeah, and, like, and they were like cheap, and I was like, oh, these are great looking, and it's like, you know, I was like a good deal, and then I put them on, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I was like, can I, if I hoist my pants up, can I make it work? And it's like, absolutely not. Like, they were literally, uh, what was it time for? Crop top. We're here, I'm saying no sound. Audio's on. Audio's on. Dang. You can't repeat that gold. Oh. Uh... Yeah, we're good. We're good. Whoever said no sound. Tony, turn your, turn your volume up, you goof. <laughs> Ah, uh, wise guy. Um, Hold on. Psst. Now I have Raspberry Beret stuck in my head. That's uh, a good one. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. What's your go-to Prince song? I only know like two. Okay. Wow. Raspberry Beret and... Um, You're only saying because I just said it. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that was, exactly. <laughs> and then the one, one about the Corvette. Yeah, Little Red Corvette. That's the one. Classic. Mm -hmm. So I didn't oh, know that Oh, Purple that Rain. I know that one too. Little Red Corvette until I was like 20-something. I thought it was Living in Regret. Living in red Look, I'm not gonna act like like everyone did like when he died, like all of a sudden I'm some huge Prince fan. Cause I, I feel like every time some musician yes. dies, all of a sudden like all these fans come out of the woodwork. The most annoying for me was and I'm the like, David I'm, Bowie. Like, come on. I listen to a lot really more David Bowie than I did like fans. Prince. Oh no no, no here but, it but, is. but but here I'm not is. at the point of like being like, oh my god. You but know. you didn't have a David Bowie t shirt. You had Prince t shirts. Bingo. <sighs> They had a print on them. Oh. One. Of Prince? No. A Prince print. I like it. A but printed yeah. Prince print. Yeah, I, so it's just like, he passed Do you have a go-to Prince song? Uh, Purple Rain. Purple it's Rain. It's like the only one I know. It's, it's, <laughs> well, you're it's younger, almost as good right? as Chocolate Rain. Yeah. 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 Chocolate Rain. <laughs> Nothing's as good as... He's, he's got like a... That song's amazing. He's, uh, like, I was, I'll be scrolling on Facebook and I'll just see an ad for like barbecue... But it's Taze on Day. Like, have you seen this? Barbecue and foot rubs? That's something else. That's a different advertisement. <laughs> okay. You ever seen that one? I don't want to know what you're getting advertised for and why. No, but would you not buy barbecue if you came with a foot rub? I mean, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with this conversation. I would buy barbecue without the foot rub. Yes. So, that, so that, like, it's an even better deal then. Like, it's like a two for one. <laughs> Yeah, let's just keep moving. You've made me uncomfortable. <laughs> Can you explain what do you mean by barbecue? And I, don't, I don't know if it was like a real commercial, if it's like like, <laughs> uh, like a meme thing that's online or something like that, but it was like, my memory is vague, and it was like one of those things that was like, bar, come down to so-and-so for barbecue and a foot row. Oh, yeah, You're like Big Jones. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Your targeted ads are wild. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, my targeted oh. ads are targeted. Oh, I get some weird ones, like some highly... Like, what is this? And like, oh, okay, that's not what I thought it was at all. 
And then they just finally skipped. I'll show you guys off air. They skipped the suggestive and went straight for on my Facebook. Like, straight up, unacceptable to adult toy. Like, yeah. aggressive. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I was like hiding my phone. Like, what in the heck? Like, wow. Hi, what are you do searching not for? Show me ex- it's nothing like that. I'm like, sure. do not show well, me that ad again. We well, you know how they work. Because yeah. I'm getting advertised for blue blockers. Yeah, in Christ that have like tied into Christ of the Barons because <laughs> obvious reasons that obvious. we talked about. But, this one was a weird one. I was like, I can't believe that we skipped like the suggestive, and now we're like straight up. It's like Wish, the app. Like, I mean, you order stuff from, straight from China. Yeah, they like those things like are a, hilarious. Uh, Green Bay Packers crack pipe ones. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was a why? rose and a vial. Yeah, yeah. Rep your team, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, that's not even my, t- I mean, I'm an owner of the Green Bay Packers. Humble, bro. Oh, whoa. No big deal. Wow. How, how, and how do you manage there. that portfolio with your Basquiat and your yeah. Green Bay Packers? And- it's called diversification. <laughs> Hopefully my, you didn't diversify too much into crypto. My, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I did. <laughs> uh, well, the good thing is, is art is, should be doing well. So maybe your Basquiat would make up for it. Um, I should have bought more Basquiat. Yeah. It is doing really well. <laughs> Uh, where my crypto did not do so well. Also, mm, again, I took a really just don't listen to your friends, okay? It's yeah. Just some bad advice from someone like, no, I'm telling you, buy that, buy it. It'll be good. Hold on to it for like four weeks, and I literally lost seventy seven percent. And it was one of my biggest. Was it like poop coin or something? No, no, no. It wasn't any crypto. <laughs> okay. Poop coin. Uh, I, I don't know. Like they got dumb. No, names. I didn't do any fringe crypto other than like Doge, just to be funny. And I doubled up on Doge, but doubling up seventy bucks to one hundred and forty, like okay, cool, yeah. like yeah, you know, like no, the the one that I took the advice on that was a flash in the pan Doge. Like, yeah, I think it's still up from where it once was. So. I, I don't know. I feel like I feel like some people who who got in there, it's, it might still be up. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people got in and then it immediately like went back down and, and leveled out, and so it's literally a pyramid scheme. Yes, like, absolutely. Like that the, that is all fringe crypto, though. The, yeah, the chain letters or Ponzi scheme. Like, yep. You get it hyped up. People get involved. You hear that? Like, you're no better than uh, whatever those uh, popular um, pyramid schemes are of the day now. Yeah, yeah. Like the the the, the fit drinks and the hair dudes and the whatever. Right. <laughs> Right. I can't recall what yeah, the hair do. The fit drinks and the yeah, hair like the, the, the you know what I'm talking Sounds about. Sounds like we're in the 50s. Right yes. Now. <laughs> How is it any different than like whatever I'm scam thing they were selling it. in the 50s? Not arguing. Probably like those exercise machines that just shake you. You are. It's the description that bothers me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. The, uh, terrible, terrible, you know, thing to get involved with. <laughs> like, like you said, like the poop coin. Like, oh. Poop butt coin, ha ha ha. It's like people are losing, like, yeah, it shot up to like 2,000% of what it was. Right. And then, you know, a ton of people are left holding the bag on that because, you know, you just followed the hype. Basically, by the time you actually hear someone say something, like, if I hear someone talking about it at work, I'm like, it's too late. It's too late. Yeah, you're done. Yeah. Like, you got in on the bottom of the pyramid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Rough. Rough stuff. Anyway. Speaking of pyramid schemes, though, have you been to Market of Marion recently? No. They still, and like, this, uh, they made me think of this because, you know, someone mentioned something in the 50s, and I thought of, like, the old exercise machines. Like, they still have a pretty large, prominent booth there that sells. Oh, that's, they've revamped. <laughs> this yeah. exerciser where it's, like, literally a platform you stand on with, like, a T-handle, yeah, and it literally just shakes you, and, like, they have these videos playing on these monitors, and, like, a very, you know, um, a typical salesy person. Who tells you about like how it like like shakes your fat off? Right. And there's usually someone doing a demo on it, and I guess because they continually pay rent like year after year, that they're actually like selling these things. But so that's a thing. This is like a revamp thing, and I actually was instructed to stand on one. Oh, you've tried it? Yes. I... Did it work? They're like, Look you burned three hundred calories, and I was like, no, I did not. I, yeah, <laughs> I want to know how that works, though. So. 
But have you ever sat in one of the massage chairs at like the mall or at the trampoline place and you're yeah. just like all your fat? Like, yes. It's the most I embarrassing thing ever. Right? Well, the one at the trampoline place too, they get you with a little surprise if oh, you're not ready for yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I think I just realized how they work. You get on one, everything jiggles. You realize how much fat working. you have yeah. and then you're like, I didn't know that part jiggles right. too. And then you go to the gym. Yeah. Yep. And so like that's what's burning the calories. The machine is just like shaming you. I'm so glad like, you did this. Look how chubby you are. <laughs> I can't wait. To, that reminds me of the Billy Madison. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to go to high school. <laughs> Don't you say that. Uh, yeah, gosh, that trampoline one. I remember sitting in that, my fat's jiggling, and all of a sudden I'm like, yo! And I'm thinking I'm on like candid camera or something. Like, no, someone's like, <laughs> give you a little. <laughs> yeah, gives you a little, little goose in the caboose. Wow. <laughs> That's to let you know Every part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sitting in the chair without putting money in because that is right there. Oh, that's I think that's called the happy ending. Yeah. Like, get out. Like, get out. It's the ejector seat. <laughs> yeah. just, please just sound an alarm next time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just, do, just like have an automated voice. Yeah. Please leave. <laughs> right. <laughs> Dispensing <laughs> cab fare. <laughs> Dispensing <laughs> cab fare. That's terrible. Uh, All right. What do you want to talk about up there? I, these are. Yeah, awful there's like some 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 questionable ones. The, the, it's, it's not a strong lineup, I'll tell you that. Well, no. It's not our best work. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got uh, U.S. Coin Task Force, and being that we sell challenge coins at TJM, I was like, oh, this is cool. This has got to be related to uh, like challenge coins, I would assume. They created a task force though, for it, though? <laughs> no, it's for the freaking coin shortage. You know, you see all those signs that were like... We need quarters. Right. It's yeah. like, yeah, coin shortage. Well, you know, I'm like, is this, are they disappearing? Like, what is happening? Why is there I, a shortage? People are putting them in their epoxy floors in their bathroom. Oh, man. That's, that's why. That's where they're all going. Actually, I did the math on, like, doing that, like, with pennies or something. Because I saw, like, this, like, entire floor down yeah. somewhere. And I'm like, oh, that's actually more expensive than, like, getting decent flooring. And people, like, turn them into rings, like my wedding ring is made out of a quarter, so that's where they're going. No, so I'm partially responsible. So there, there's supposed to be, like, $48 billion of coins in circulation, and they say that the majority of them are just in couches. households. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it could be couches. Hmm. But, like, people that um, live in apartments that have to, you know, use coins for washing machines and stuff ah, like that. Ah, like, yeah. It's just perpetual. It's just staying in there. Claw like machines. Claw machines, mm -hmm. like you do. Mm -hmm. But it's just staying in there. It's not going back into, like, circulating in the economy. I tell you what, I'm right? never going to leave my house and go, oh, let me, <laughs> almost forgot my change. <laughs> right. Let me go back in and get a pocket full of nickels. Like, I have a giant <laughs> jar full of, like, coins, so... I probably should just give them back to the government for dollar bills. Or maybe wait till they, the economy's better and then right. I get more from my money. Did you ever go to those Coinstar things? Yeah, Coinstar's a ripoff. Yeah, yeah you're less. like, ah, oh, cool, I'm going to dump my coins. And I'm like, yeah, we're taking 10%. Like, <laughs> right. What? Right off the top. Yeah. That's why I just went out and bought one of those like cheap plastic battery-operated coin sorters in the bag and like the rolls and just started rolling them myself. Yeah. And then I was just like, yeah, that's even too much work. I'll just keep putting them in this jar. <laughs> just do nothing with them. I'll just have a jar that just sits on my dresser forever now. So full of coins. we have, uh, like when Easter comes along, we'll shove plastic eggs with little coins and stuff in it. And, and then the kids get the coins. And I'm like, well, if you guys want to, like, I'll give you, you know, I'll pay you out for your coins because I need coins. And so then I just give them, you know, they're all excited that they found all these coins. And then I give them, you know, two dollars and fifty cents back, and then I have those coins again to use for the. So they next give you season. like four dollars in coins. You give them two fifty. Yeah. So I'm also not recirculating the coins. They yeah. don't take the coins and go use them at the dollar tree yeah. or anything. I just take them back and yeah, I use them every year now. Change is weird, though. I mean, change is weird. It, 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 I, I used to be like more like cash based, and then like now it's just like yeah, I'm just trying to work that point system on a credit card. But it, it's just <laughs> also like pockets are getting smaller, and like I just don't want to carry so much stuff around. Change included. Well, change means less now. So does everything. Right. Well. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Speaking but, of which, uh, <laughs> a, a zoo in Japan is feeling the oh, inflation. Oh, I saw that video. <laughs> Crunch. 
Uh huh. Go Are ahead. About the same video. Uh huh. Uh, they're feeling the inflation crunch, and so they bought cheaper fish for the penguins, and the penguins won't eat the cheaper <laughs> Have fish. Have you seen the video? <laughs> no. It's so sad. It's even sadder. Like, I read the Are article. Are they, like, smacking it away? No, no. Like, they come up, and they're, like, literally putting the fish in front of the penguin and just going... Yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's just, they like, tur they're turning their heads. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's so... They're, like, on hunger strike. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. It's awful, awfully funny. Yeah, I mean, it is. <laughs> But like, yeah, like I, the article doesn't do it justice. You have to watch a video of them trying to feed it because they're straight up denying. Well, I've seen one where the the penguin like grabbed it and then quickly let go. Yeah, and like turned away and was like, <laughs> like this ain't macro. Yeah, yeah, that's not that, that's not what you had last week. This is Dace, not macro. Get out of here with yeah. your cheap fish. Yeah. It's the problem with domesticated penguins. <laughs> spoiled. Yeah, spoiled. You're just lucky a polar bear's not eating you. Because I think that's what their predator is. I think it's seals. I think polar bears eat them too. Probably a little both. I, I would think polar imagine. bears eat anything, to be honest with you. Anything? Are, like a goat? Are I, I guarantee if there was an Arctic goat, polar a polar bear, bear would eat it. north and penguins were south. Yeah, there's northern penguins, too. Can we gotcha. just get a double check on that? I independently verified my bison comment, though. American buffalo is like a colloquial term for the bison. Right. They're, but like you said bison and buffalo were different. Don't try and retract your statement now. I'm not, but you're like, <laughs> they are different. They are They're different. They're not different. They are different. An buffalo American buffalo is, is a bison. No, it's not. It's extinct. Oh, my gosh. I'm the not going into this. I'm not going not. into this. Unbelievable. The American buffalo is. They used to shoot them from trains for sport. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> there was other motives for that. Polar bears do not eat penguins. They would if they could. That was my statement. <laughs> Just like I said, if there was Arctic goats, they'd eat Arctic goats. That's uh, they need anything. Anyway, God, you just take my words and twist them. Yeah, the BBC got me one year. The what? British Broadcasting <laughs> Channel. <laughs> British Broadcasting <laughs> Channel got me. One oh, you year. threw me off for Heard a second. That. I was like, <laughs> go on. Because <laughs> they were, they did this like, you know, David Attenborough like commercial, like join us for a new look into a, you know the life of penguins we never knew existed. And it shows these penguins just taking off and flying. And this was like mid-aughts. Flying? Flying, yeah. And I was like, yo, this got to be real. It's like got David Attenborough and the BBC is putting it out there. Well, it was their like April Fool's joke. <laughs> but I didn't know that for like three weeks. And I'm like, dude, I know that we've all thought that penguins don't fly. They've but devolved. I'm, yeah. yeah. Back into flight. I'm telling you. Well, you... Wait, you think that they used to be flight birds and then they're mm -hmm. they evolved into non-flight birds? Yes. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Very. It just makes sense. Does it? Yeah. Explain. Why would you yeah. why would you evolve wings to not use them? What, what they have a mean? common they have a common flighted ancestor. What is the common flighted ancestor? Like I know that. Okay. So, so like we have a common listen, ancestor, you know, like humans can, we can trace humans back to like that common, like hominid, right? Like we birds, all came from that. And so birds are the same way, but like, but it's, they've been so swimming for so long that their ability to fly has like devolved into like more like flippers. I'm like, devolving yeah, there's, there's, right now with There's a common flight ancestor. I, we, we're all dumber now. That's like, that's like whales are related say. to cows, you know, like they walked on land at one point. Then they just go into the ocean. They no, never came out. That's yes. vice versa. That's not vice versa. If. If birds are what dinosaurs are like, dinosaurs are birds evolved. That means that they evolved to have wings. Meaning yes. that if the, the, the penguins would evolve to have wings that would make them fly. If I had wings, I would fly. <laughs> <laughs> mammals evolved out of the water and then evolved back into the water. But mammals were, you know, on that note of the cows and the whales evolved on land and then they went into the water and it's the same thing like dinosaurs turned into birds and then the birds went from there and they became flightless birds and then flighted birds i like that you sniffed <laughs> it's like let me give myself a little break here i gotta to breathe think. too yeah. <laughs> get some air in my brain if you think i can think in that split nanosecond you're in for i don't a think rude awakening even... Think in a lot of seconds. Actually. <laughs> exactly. So why are you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll take it. Yeah. I thought a lot of thoughts in that nanosecond. I. Sniffed. Uh, I just don't think that. I uh, maybe they did. I don't know. Okay. Maybe, they did. Maybe they've evolved to be less flightful. 
It, it said 65 million years ago they flew, but were they really penguins 65 million no, years ago? No, they weren't. The, but that's what I'm saying, a common ancestor. You guys need to listen. Clear it to you. You're only hearing what you want to hear. So penguins what were we never about? flew. Pe- uh, coins. 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 Yeah. Of course we'd end up here with coins. Oh, 100%. You know, it's all the sense in the world. You can't really. Anyway, they can't just make more coins because they're like, <laughs> the more coins we make... Because we're on track to make another like 14 billion of coins this year, hmm. which is wild the, to me. The, the, the coin arm of the treasury should talk to the paper money arm and say, hey, you know, you can't just keep printing money. <laughs> but they just keep, <laughs> but they just keep printing <laughs> yeah. money. Uh, yeah, I don't, I hate watching like fringe interviews with people. Like when they pick like, you know, the nut picking, like we're going to pick a crazy person and ask them. But one of the things that I do like watching is people that are like, it's easy to fix the economy. Just print more money. Yeah. Like, yeah. When they're like so confident about it, like, uh, hello, they're the ones that control it. Just print more. Have like, you seen the new dollar bill? With, there's a with, new dollar bill? Yeah, with Andrew Jackson on it. Oh, you're messing around. Go ahead, tell us the joke. No, that's it. Oh, I get yeah. it. The joke is. Yeah. It's, Andrew Jackson's on the 20. Yeah, I get you. Good one. Yeah. Well, you need to like take a split second to sniff and think and maybe comprehend or something. Ah, got it. How did he end up on the twenty? I don't know. How did anyone end up anywhere? Oh my God! We're going into (laughs) that right now. Profound. (laughs) I meant to add more to that, but it just came out. I thought we were supposed to get the tub twenty. The Uh, tub dub. (laughs) We're supposed to get a lot of stuff, and I tell you what. (laughs) What happened? Apparently, you can vote on something, and then they just go, nah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. nah. We're not getting the Harry Tubman 20 now? <laughs> it doesn't look like it. Dang. You'd think it would have been. She would have. She would have I'm yeah. for it, you know? Well, yeah. Well, why not? <laughs> Change <laughs> it up. Yeah, let's just switch it up. Let's let's put all kinds of new faces on. Yeah. Oh. Except so, for the penny. Leave the penny the way it is. It's on track to debut in 2030. Why? 2030? <laughs> yeah. Seriously? Yeah. What is taking them so long? I look. I don't have all that question. 2030, they're going to be like, oh, we saw unforeseen delays. It's going to be pushed back to 2050. It's coming. Was there a time? To- like, I don't know. Just like, I feel like that was like a thing years and years ago. Like, why is it taking a decade? <clears throat> this is from look- February. I guess they pushed it back. Of course they pushed it back. I don't know why. But- they won't tell you either. Strange. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to know, like, how do we get to see the graphs and stats that politicians use to make decisions in general anyway. Like, I would like to see that information. Specifically, related to me, with OEU. Mm. Hey, my power bill hurt me. Uh, it was painful. Ooh. It was, yeah. I went, you know, and I started doing the math on it, and I, the only reason I found out is because I was like, this just doesn't make any sense. And fortunately, the Ocala Gazette did an article on May, end of May, that was like, oh, by the way, start budgeting now for an increase. Well, it's a little yeah, hard Yeah, I got a notice for an increase. <laughs> oh, did you? Mm-hmm. Maybe I got a notice and just yeah. didn't notice Yeah, I got a it. notice and it was like, I can't remember what term they used, but it's like, what, like the hourly rate or usage rate or something. Was yeah, like you kill increased. a lot of hours. Yeah. So I, and they're like, oh, it's only going to go, for a, for a family that uses 1,000 kilowatt hours a month, that's only going to go up $28. A, false. B, I don't use only a thousand kilowatts per month, so I I don't know. It's insane to me. It went from like, and I don't really get the math anyway, because it's like, oh, it's going from, you know, two point eight cents <laughs> to five point six cents, which to me like, is double. I just pay the bill because what else am I gonna do? Dispute it? Like, <laughs> well, no. So I go back and I look, and it's like, oh yeah, this was presented to city council, and they voted five zero five to zero to approve this rate increase and i'm like what did y'all see that i didn't yeah i don't know that made you go oh yeah we absolutely need to double the kilowatt per hour usage rate which i just don't like i don't like there there must be something there that i don't know but i don't know like they're expecting everyone to put their ac units to 82. haven't you seen all those charts and those graphs i I mean i don't know i I want to know who put those out (laughs) That's like that's like when you see like that the, the the news article that's like here's an actual budget for a modern millennial and you're like looking at it and you're like no one pays twenty bucks for internet or six hundred dollars for rent <laughs> right. who wrote this yeah. so it's like there's people putting out those things where they're like oh just set your AC to eighty two degrees when you sleep and it's just like no 
Absolutely not. Yeah. I, I, there's got to be something that I don't know because it just seems weird to me that they would vote five, you know, all in favor of raising the, the rates. I'm, we're definitely going to, like, adjust what we're doing at our house. I'll say that much because it's like... I Are you going to adjust that AC unit? We, we already have anyway. Ugh, it's so hot outside. It is. Yeah. And so it's like, well, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I used to go... I would do the math and I'd go, would I pay $2 to not be hot when I sleep? Yes. And the answer is yes. Absolutely. Now I'm like, would I pay $20? Like, mm, maybe not. Right. Maybe not a day. I'll just change my sheets more. Yeah, $2 <laughs> a day. I would go, all right, I'll be a little hot for this. $20 a day, like, meh, 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 Yeah. I'm going to change that up a little bit. Pa- Papa going to change habits. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know where I can cut back. You know, like, Lauren and I work, and then... So it's just like it's not getting used during, you know, three, four days out of the week. Yeah. And then at night, you know, it's just typical usage. Like, right. I, I don't think it's gone up. Like, our usage has gone up. Like, I get it. Like, my, you have kids at home off uh, from summer break, you know. My concern is once it goes up, too, like, it don't are we go ever going to go back? No, like, right. absolutely not. I've, I've worn one thing living in this country. It's just like as soon as something leaves, you ain't getting it back. <laughs> I still take my shoes off on an airplane. Trying to get on an airplane. Right. You know? We've had one person try and blow up an airplane with a shoe <laughs> and bomb. from now on. And in perpetuity, we're taking yeah. our shoes off. Unless I pay TSA, of course. Right. Then you can just do whatever the hell you want and get on the plane. Yeah, that's not racketeering at all. No, it's absolutely not. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, it definitely seems like forced energy conversation. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I, I, it's frustrating. Did you just read Mike Wall's comment? Yeah. Forced energy conservation. Right. It's what it, I mean, it is. It's, I will certainly be oh, conserving yeah. the energy that I'm using because I'm not going to continue to pay what I'm paying. Mm-hmm. Like I, just, I, I mean, I'll pay the kilowatts per hour because I don't have a choice. It's like, oh, what are my other options? Like, oh, I can go solar. Well, i got to pay to go solar. Yeah. And i got to pay to not be on the grid. Well, I mean, stay on the grid, but it's like, yeah. I don't know. Then you sell them back the power. Right. Yeah, but that's... At least that's what the salesmen tell you. Yeah. That's, yeah. It pays yeah. for itself. And like, I'm like, yeah, there's a catch here. Right. Yeah. There is a catch here. <clears throat> but I guarantee solar's about to pop off again. For yeah. sure. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not doing this. So... I want um, them solar roof tiles. Yeah, I would like mm-hmm. the solar That's because, like, I'll tell you what. Solar panels on your roof looks ugly. Well... I, I, I'm less concerned about that. Like, oh, I'll just put it on the backside. But it's the structure, like the, you know, the weight and all of that. Yeah. That, then, like, what? If something falls on it? Like, is that going to break it? Like, I don't know. If something falls on your house, is it going to break it? I, I feel like a solar panel is a little bit more sensitive than an shingle. asphalt shingle <laughs> on three-quarter yeah, inch plywood. Solar tiles. I don't know how those are made, but they seem better. <laughs> like... It, I mean, like, look, if I can power my house from my roof and it looks normal, yeah. that sounds cool. Yeah. I don't know. It's rough. And I just, like, there's got to be something that I don't see. So then now I'm like, well, now i got to go back. Did you see the place. lawsuit? Well, yeah, I saw the lawsuit. Okay. I'm not saying it's connected. Convenient timing, though. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get it back one way or another. Yeah. All y'all that signed up to be a part of this class action. I think you had to opt got- out. To be honest with you, well, that's what I don't know you if you had to just... sign up. Like, I haven't been following it, but I think you like opt out. I don't know. You guys told me that this morning. I thought you had to opt in, and I was like, "Oh, I'm not gonna opt in." Like, whatever. I was, you know, Mister Too Good for it at the time. Now I'm like, "Yo, where's the <laughs> work? I need to get some money back." <laughs> oh my yeah. god, changes when uh when it affects my wallet. <laughs> it does. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, they for a while there, you could sign up for like. Um, I don't know if they ever actually introduced it, but you could sign up for solar power, but it's like, or not, I don't know, something like that. Some, I think it's solar bank power. But it was like, oh, it's going to cost a little bit more. And I was like, yeah, it's okay. I'll oh, to where you get like, buy, are you buying renewable energy? Yeah. Okay. I was like, oh, I'll buy renewable energy. Now I'm like, give me the cheap stuff. Whatever you got. <laughs> Where's the coal, guys? The cheap stuff. I, that's so pretty cool. great, like when, when, when power was sold like that. You're like, I don't know, I'm in a tough spot. Give me, give me the earth ruining stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like the low grade energy. Right. Yeah, Not give that, me that 88. Pretty. And it's like shopping at like Winn Dixie or, you know, or Harvey's versus like Whole Foods. You right. know, it's like one you get a good feeling for, but you're paying for it. And the other one, you're just like, I just need bang from a buck. Yeah. <laughs> just, I don't care that this oil field killed all the penguins. <laughs> now the polar bears are going going hungry. Starving. Because yeah, yeah. they can't eat. 
You got that tell oil you. on them. Now they're flying everywhere. Oh. <sighs> anyway. You never know. You want to talk about the Guidestones? You want to talk about uh, um, Bojo's? Bojo's? Bojangles? Boris Johnson. Oh, yeah. I just heard he resigned. <laughs> Well, and in 36 hours, 50, over 50 other, like, political represent- government representatives also resigned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's going on? I don't know. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I try not to They guess. kind of left the EU, and I don't think it's been doing too well for them. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, well, I, <laughs> and there's just, like, tons of sc- scandals, I guess. Yeah, sometimes I when I feel bad about our own country, I'm like, yeah, England seems to be going through a spell as well. <laughs> Like with their own mess up stuff. Everyone. Also, yeah. really dumb to like leave the EU too. Like, like y'all could just freely travel, and now it's like you can't. Yeah, I think the biggest thing there was the work too. Like yeah, going back and forth to work. Like, oh man, all of our people that work in London don't actually live in London. Yeah, you know, they live in other countries surrounding here. And yeah. Yeah, I don't follow. Like, I can barely keep up with our own politics. I'm I, certainly not keeping up with England's politics. Yeah, and, and, and to me, it was just weird that first of all, when I was like. Oh, people just resign out of their positions, like, <laughs> and that many, yeah, like, that well, many people. I just saw that doesn't first. happen here. Here, it's like you have to like drag them away, <laughs> yeah. right? You have people that just stay in office even though they have just like yeah. terrible things going. <laughs> like right. they lose the election, they're like, yeah, not not conceding. Yeah. It's like oh, you have to. It's the right. law. <laughs> you lost. Anyway, I'm, I'm not following, but like, it's just weird to me that. 50 plus people also resigned. I didn't hear that. Yeah. So I'm like, is this by choice? Is it they're like, uh, do they care about him? And they're like, oh, I'm not going to be no, here. No, if, 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 if anything I've learned, it's there is some kind of conspiracy theory there. Well, there's conspiracy theory everywhere. Like the Hadron That's why Collider. It's theory. Let's hear your conspiracy theory. It's not you. mine. It's just a conspiracy theory. Because they they've had it turned off for like, what, five years now? And they just turned it back on, on like in July. And. They didn't know if they were going to find it. They already found three new exotic particles, like three new different types of quarks. You know where I learned the most about CERN and the Hadron Collider? That's a tough one to say. Yeah, especially when I'm reading what you actually wrote up there. That's yeah. an honest mistake. Dan Brown. <laughs> like, the guy that wrote like the Angels and Demons yeah. Da Vinci Code? <laughs> yeah, I can't remember which book it is, but one of his books is like centered around uh, CERN and the really? Hadron Collider. Yeah. Because it's like the God particle that they get. Yeah, the Higgs yeah. boson. Angels that was right. demons. Oh, that was it a was good one. I did read that yeah. one. Yeah. I don't remember that part, though. That's The whole book yeah, is centered around that. Yeah, I don't remember that part. <laughs> I don't, I, you probably read the book cover. Right? Like, <laughs> no, oh, no, no I, I, I actually read that book and then read the Da Vinci Code. Like, I remember them being enjoyable, but it was like a decade ago or whenever they came like out. 20 years ago. Yeah, ago. Ooh, maybe. Yeah. So yeah, I don't remember. I don't retain. Because I was working... At the farm. Ah. I've been at TJM for 17 years, so... It was at least over 17 years ago that the Da Vinci Code came out. Well, I don't remember that being about CERN. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying... Yeah. Anyway. But yeah, they were like... That was one of the things is like, we might turn this on and like not find anything, you know? Because like, they had such a big discovery with the Higgs boson, and then, you know, within a couple days of it being on, it's like three new subatomic quark particles. Four years, nonstop. It's that running for you. It's going to run for you. Run four so years. in those four years, it's going to tear open this fabric. Well, now I know why I need so much for electricity. Absolutely. You use it a lot for this thing. Yeah, it's like seventeen kilometers long too, yeah, like the whole insane. loop, just yes. to slam particles together. That's insane. So what are the new particles? What do they do? They're so I don't know what they do. Uh, so it's like a lot of times when I read these articles, it's like. Okay, there's a point where I'm like, okay, I'm following, I'm following, I'm following. I'm like, die, you lost me. I'm out. <laughs> I just know that they're quarks, and quarks are like the really small things that make up like subatomic particles. So it's like like your atoms that are made of like protons and neutrons, right. like those are then like I believe made up of like quarks mm. and bosons. And so like those are like the smallest things I think we know of. But they just discovered like three new ones. I don't know what that means. All I know is the scientists and physicists are like, oh, the more we discover, the more we like learn about space, you know, and how our universe is. Uh, dark, uh, dark matter is what they're researching. Now. That's what they've been trying to figure out because it's like when they like research like the galaxy in space like that, they're like, we have a theory, you know, not like uh, I got a theory and it's a conspiracy theory, like a scientific theory, you know, that uh, like um, that there's something called dark matter because they're like something has to account for. This, like, negative space, I guess. And so they're trying to prove that, and it's been, like, elusive. I think 
we're living in a negative space. <laughs> like it, just in this room or in yeah, general? Yeah, specifically <laughs> oh, wow. right here <laughs> with you. Well, the, the theory is, is like, <laughs> the conspiracy theory is, let me preface that, is that um, when they turn it on, it like uh, splits us into like an alternative right. dimension. And people are like, oh, it's like the Mandela effect is going to be increased tenfold. And like, you're going to see all this other weird stuff happening because they're like slamming these particles together. And, you know, people are also have Explain always... Explain the Mandela effect. So that's like when people, it's like a, a collective like misremembering. Right. Um, and it actually has to do with like Nelson Mandela. Right. Because people think that he like died in exile. Yes. And they're like, no, he very much didn't, you yeah. know. <laughs> and so it's like this collective like, like misremembering of like historical things. Another one that people remember is Berenstein versus Berenstain Bears, yeah. you know, and just like other like random like sometimes. I thought it was all stupid until it got to the Berenstein Bears. Yeah, like, so sometimes it's like a no, children's no. book, but it started off with Nelson Mandela yeah. and like his life. Uh, and so it's just one of those things where. It's the thing where everyone re remembers. It's like, something different, like a, a different a way. familiar, incorrect memory. Yeah, and so people are saying that's going to increase, and then people go far, you know. When so I say it's people, like deja I mean, vu and stuff like that? Kind of, you know, and yeah. it's weird because you're like, I could have sworn it was something else, and now I'm learning that it's like that. you like, thought that Angels and Demons wasn't about sir. <laughs> yeah, like, and, and so and, 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 yeah. I did read the book. <laughs> He's getting mad. I'm not getting mad. Probably listen to it anyway. But there was so a different reality back then. So, like, <laughs> yeah. the books changed between now because the, the... That's what we're saying. Hadron Collider was turned on, and so pff, split us off. All right. Before we get too split off into craziness, let's go ahead and bring up Jessica. Too late. Already, already <laughs> split off. Come on up. So, for those of you that don't know, Jessica Fieldhouse, the director for O'Callum Main Street. Yes. Very exciting. So, can you give us a just quick rundown of what a Calamine Street is? And hold on. Yeah, definitely. And talking to the microphone. Like you this. can move it. You can move it. <laughs> but yeah, that's like one big thing. It's, it doesn't pick up too well. Well, it does. You just got to be close to it. Yeah. It's it's, like it's fragile. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just, just gonna hit yeah. it. Perfect. Wrong. Yeah. It's gonna like fall. It happens. That's why mine has a foam bumper on it because I just keep slamming my face yeah, into it. Yeah, I think I will do the same probably by accident. <laughs> <laughs> but Ogala Main Street, we're a five hundred one C three here in Ocala, and we work in conjunction with the city. We're a nationally accredited program, so you have main streets all over the state and all over the nation that focus on downtown. Yeah, so, so like know. the Leesburg Bike Fest is put on by the Leesburg Main Street. You got it, so. yeah, exactly. I just went to their 4th of July nice. celebration too that was put on by their main street. So each of us were required to focus on four main pillars. It's called like the four-point approach. Oh, cool. So organization, which is exactly what you think it is, right. <laughs> like oversight of a nonprofit uh, promotion. So focusing on what makes us unique as our own downtown, bringing quality events that benefit businesses, not just slapsticking something together and right. saying, oh, we have an event this weekend. Um, and obviously the marketing of that. Design, which is really cool because it's not just facade, but how our downtown functions, the wayfinding of downtown, and then economic vitality. So wow. that's revitalization of downtown. So you guys grew up here. Yeah. Oh, it's been revitalized a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it's amazing to see the growth too. And I was just driving down. I had to do a double take because I was on Magnolia. And you know, the sidewalks are like 10 feet wide yeah. out mm -hmm. of, by the Marion Theater. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was like, wait a second. They removed the second lane mm -hmm. to expand it even further. And oh, now really? they're doing. Mm -hmm, and so I was wondering what that construction was for. Yeah, so they are doing it down by like the tumbleweed. Right. And then I guess it would be north. Now they've on the sidewalk is all completely well, is it, destroyed. Well, aren't they doing something next to the theater? Like a little like. Yeah. Do you know any? Yeah, so supposedly. All right, supposedly. Supposedly. Um, they're going to be doing some outside like bar hangout yeah. space. Which is pretty cool. Uh, I think that's the construction I saw. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I think they're just doing the sidewalk right now. Oh, really? Because, yeah. like, yeah, they had, like, the little excavator there, and it was well, like. Well, no, but they're doing the sidewalk to prep for that, I though. Think so. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And they're expanding. In first, they're starting on Magnolia, and there's like a whole plan to expand the sidewalks, and then they're gonna go west, eventually, hmm. closer to like where the Starbucks is mm -hmm. at 301, and yeah. start prepping for the new parking garage. Oh yeah, yeah. Because exciting. I was a big fan of that when they put it in. Yeah. And now it's already full <laughs> all yeah. the time. Yeah. Like I even just like bypass it because I'm like, well, it's full, you know. Yeah. 
there's always so many people it's like but i love to say it too like when i used to go downtown like when we used to go downtown when we were much younger it was just like i, I tell i tell young kids coming up i'm like be one of those old men i was like when i would go down there we had three bars and yes. now it's just like dude you there's more stuff to do down there than you can shake a stick at I like know. in terms of restaurants and bars and even parking now so yeah it's come a long way even in just like what five five ten years five, yeah. ten years yeah i think we went from like ten years ago yeah there's a statistic that says we had like an 80 percent vacancy rate in yeah, downtown. That, that now checks we have, out. Yeah, and now we have a 90% occupancy rate. So pretty cool. it's amazing. And then, obviously, like some of the older buildings are getting rehabbed. So yeah. the Old Brothers Keeper building, I'm so excited. I was Shoppers. a little sad that they tore it down, but the new one is looking really nice. Yeah. Because it's like, I love going into the second floor of Brothers Keeper because it had such an old, like, I mean, it was yeah. like the original wood floor. Like, it was just very old-timey, but... Well, it was very old. It was I, falling apart. I know. <laughs> it makes sense because, like, I, I had, I would go in there and go thrifting and it was just like, yeah, like, okay, like, I can... Hey, under... watch where you step. Like, you know, yeah, you definitely literally. wouldn't be would put like <laughs> yeah. a lot of people up there yeah. no but now it's beautiful i mean they kept the original like facade they're yeah. putting the brick back and they're oh, putting cool. the goldman block plaque back uh, on the side, oh which that's is nice. awesome so if you drive you'll okay, see that a little feel square a lot that's better. blank yeah expect something gold i'm sure <laughs> that's awesome yeah no that's really cool yeah uh so what's what, what's on the main street agenda of focus right now <sighs> we've got a lot of projects going on one thing i can't say yet but i'm really excited look for an update from us at the end of the month it'll awesome. be like a big press release release something really big that we'll be bringing into town awesome. um, but we're hopefully we're we have an initiative for golf carts to bring golf carts into downtown right now nice. that's through our design committee because we want to host transportation and have like a trolley system yes. will the golf downtown. carts take up the car spaces because I was told that they yeah. wouldn't and then they are so they're kind of auditing different options okay. right now I don't think anything's been pushed forward yeah it's really gonna be on the city's end to decide how we move forward with that if we we move forward with it um, but we have the boundaries I mean you can park in the back side of City Hall right now can yeah we talk about the trolley system real quick sure. yeah so what's the cool. goal for the trolley system so we want to incorporate so our district goes from the s curve right with the boundaries being I think it's Osceola now because we expanded mm -hmm. so Osceola all the way to 301 and then we run up so it's pretty narrow but we run all the way up to the yeah. Riley and so we want to connect Midtown, which is the right. whole north side yeah. of 40, to downtown. Because nice. downtown is thriving, but you'll see a lot of development and stuff going on in Midtown. I mean, right. obviously, Infinite is moving over into the old Infinite's fire station. Over there. Like so, the Art Exchange is over there. Noma's over yeah. there. The Discovery Science there. Center's over there. It's amazing. And, you know, some untapped potential yeah. in land and mm -hmm. some big mm -hmm. projects, hopefully, that are on the horizon. But we want to be able to... Yeah. connect the two because crossing 40 is a huge issue for a lot of people yeah every time i would go to one of those like open table things that was like yeah. the public's biggest concern it yeah. seemed it was just like well how do we get across that because 40 is busy you it know it's busy um and there's always ideas thrown around of like bridges and tunnels but it's well, just like <laughs> well yeah, the, the, the engineers and developers and yeah. people like hosting these round tables were like do you realize how long that bridge needs to be for yeah. ada compliance right, exactly. um they're like it would literally have a ramp going to yeah you know, three blocks down or whatever. It's true. So, I mean, we hope that trolleys and okay. golf carts and having pedestrian friendly traffic patterns yeah. Yeah. will help alleviate some of the you know, negative the... connotations of yeah. crossing 40. Yeah. Well, I have and... no problem with it personally. Well, I, you know, it's not just that it's, you know, we're just not accustomed to walking anyway. I know. Right. Like, if I go anywhere else, I'm like, ah, it's only, you know, 1.2 miles away. Let's just walk there, you know? Yeah. Here, I'm like, I had to park 12 feet away. Never again. <laughs> yeah. You know? But, so we're not accustomed to it. And or that stretch, if we're being honest, mm -hmm. between downtown and midtown to where, like, Max is, can get a little sketchy if you're not yeah. used to it. You know, it's yeah. very lit up now, which is nice. Yeah. But there's just kind of like that, like, uh-oh, dead area where, like... Mm -hmm. It gets very quiet, yeah. you know, yeah. you're seeing people that you haven't seen before, like, all right, how do I how do I walk a little bit quicker to get to where I want to go? <laughs> right. So if there's more traffic going on and there's more expected expected traffic and the like the Cavity or whatever it is place. Yeah. Muddy Lotus. Yeah, Muddy Lotus. Oh, Muddy, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they them with like Max, like when stuff mm -hmm. is going on at Max at night, it's like, oh cool, this totally changes the atmosphere. Yeah. Right. So we, how do we get just a little bit more of that done, uh, which is pretty cool. I didn't know actually Main Street expanded its boundaries. So I was on the yeah. founding committee yes. when it 
revamped because technically we already had a main street that was yeah, just dormant for, years, for a long time. Yeah. So it's on the founding. Did that for a year or two. Really enjoyed it. Um, and even then, the the scope was pretty small. Mm-hmm. It was good enough for what we needed to do, yeah. uh, but it was pretty small. I got involved with that because I was part of this one of these roundtables or read a study or whatever it was, and they were like, yeah, economic um, vitalization comes from building your core. Yeah. And I thought about it at the time because I'm like, man, Cocal is expanding, but it just didn't seem – it just seems so like – Sporadic. Sporadic. Yeah. And I'm like, how do we focus on the – you know, just that downtown area? And, and it's just insane how much it has grown over the last well, five, Well, and I 10, think too years. when you think about like – so I'll use Kimley Horn as an example, right? Like they're bringing young people into Ocala. Obviously, they're located on the square, right? But they're having a really hard time keeping people here. They're losing them to Tampa or Gainesville or right. Orlando. They're moving away. So to have a really strong downtown and a yeah. place for people to be excited about living here and raising a family, the downtown core is your heart of your community. And yeah. if you have a strong heart, you're going to be able to bring folks in, you're going to be able to recruit and retain employees long term. So for our bigger businesses that are coming into town, downtown really does play a huge oh, role. Oh, for sure. In that, yeah. I remember hearing that from, you know, well, Mayor Gwynn when we when, you know, when I was on the board with Max in the early days of that and presenting to city council trying to get their buy in. He was like, "Oh yeah, we talked to the, you know, cuz industry was just starting to move in, you, you know, back then like we're starting to get more of these distribution centers and apparently that's something common that they would ask. It's like, what are your, what's your education system like, you know, for families with kids? But they're like, what is your downtown like? You know, yeah. that was like always like a question because, it, as you said, like, who's going to want to live here if there's nothing to do? Yeah. Um, there's nowhere to go. There's no fun stuff. Um, so that was always cool to hear, you know, and we got, you know, buy in, obviously, and more places are too, because I see when someone opens up a restaurant, and they're kind of like, I'm like, that's a weird spot. There's nothing around it, you know, and sometimes they don't work out. And whereas, like, if you go downtown, it's just like you have automatically you have a base because you have so many people in and right, around. Yeah, you're, you're, well, that was the crazy thing when I started with Main Street is some of these bigger, you know, chains or retailers didn't want to come in because they do an economic impact study where it's like, oh, well, we want, you know, X amount of median income within a 1.5 mile radius, and there just wasn't that yeah. downtown. And so yeah. there's not a lot of lodging downtown or like homes downtown. I mean, you have the historic district, but right. But it, it didn't fall, fall within what they were looking to do. And then you had like one of the first ones that I can remember to take the the leap was uh, Mojo Barbecue, which not Mojo's, but mm-hmm. which is Brick City. Yeah. Yeah. And they were like, we're gonna, you know, looks like you guys, uh, you know, have a really strong downtown, and we're gonna we're gonna come in here and do this. And I thought that was smart. And now you're seeing more and more yep. people yeah. going, oh, okay, you well, know, it snowballs for sure. Right. Yeah. And right. so I think you see that in downtown. And what I'm really really excited about is what's gonna happen in Midtown. That you can't tell us about. I can't tell you about any yeah. of it. And that, <laughs> that's the end of the month. That we get to hear about yeah, that. Right. Um, no. That'll okay. Be a so that's something else that's at the end of the month. Else. Oh, and yeah. so there's something else else that we yeah. that can't know yeah, about that's our, in our board is working really hard right now okay. <laughs> How, where do we, we go about that? right now no 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 hold on i know what do we do to get these updates when you can make them public so we'll be working with the city okay to be able to publicly do you guys have, you have a facebook page that we can we follow have facebook, okay. instagram and then of course if you're interested in getting involved and you really do have like that vision and you're and you, you want know, the inside info yeah come and join a committee okay. <laughs> you know yeah. yeah we need more volunteers and we need more people that are passionate about growing our downtown and we are expanding our design committee and our economic vitality committees right now so yeah what do you have that you can tell us about right now (laughs) we have a historical walk we do so we have a whole strategic plan that our board put together last august and so on that strategic plan one of the things was to celebrate the history in downtown ocala we have a lot of beautiful historic buildings there's a self-guided walking tour so if you've ever noticed like the blue placards on the building you can scan the qr code so that was a partnership between us and hops um but now olivia ortiz who is amazing if you know her she's very prevalent in the art community is kind of our mc extraordinaire yeah. our tour guide and so we have one coming up on saturday that we still have a few tickets for typically it includes drinks so it's kind of like a drunk history yeah. it's fun if Olivia is involved it's gonna include drinks. Yeah. <laughs> but we're excited because it's like it's we're doing be... tony's 2000th run there's beers at the end yes <laughs> 
so it's healthy yeah. and fun. Yeah. But we typically are in like the heart of downtown. So what's different about this Saturday is we're going north and we're going to be at the Max and Noma. And we even get to go into the cemetery. So the Evergreen Cemetery is a historic and it's haunted, right? It is haunted. Ooh. So apparently the Ocala Parks and Rec folks will not go into the cemetery after dark. And what? What I've been told is there's like a tree that's in the back that just has this really bad vibe and juju going on. So you on. guys are going into the cemetery after dark to check out the tree <laughs> yes, and there's exactly. tickets open. There's a couple yes. available this weekend on Saturday, right? Yes, and so. we'll do it from 6 to 8, so it'll be kind of as the sun Dust. is going down. Yeah, I'm nervous. Guys, get your ticket. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go. <laughs> no, that sounds, that sounds amazing. So I'll just stand out here, you guys. Yeah. yeah. Just take pictures from afar. I, I, think, that, I think that's awesome. I, I know when I was in my 20s, like I so badly wanted to live downtown and I was lucky enough to find an apartment in a historic house yeah. on Fort King Street, and it was within walking distance of the downtown. And this is the downtown of like over 10 years ago where we had three bars. That was Pi, BFE, and O'Malley's. Yeah. That was it. Which were awesome, by the way. Yeah, like two of those don't even <laughs> exist anymore, which is weird. Yeah. Um, but like that was like the only downtown housing. And so now I'm driving by and like they have the housing by Tuscola Park yeah. and they're building that new one that's on the corner of like what, Watula and Fort King yeah. as well across from City Hall. Yeah. So I'm like, I would have loved as like a young person to have more downtown living so that's kind of cool to see that coming up because there just exactly. wasn't any and i was like i moved back to ocal and i was like i want to be as close to the action as i could right for whatever it was worth you know it was much less than it is now and uh but apparently uh the house i lived in was also haunted yeah <laughs> because i found out that's how i learned about ghost tours is they would walk up and like i would see the flash going in through my window yeah. And it was like 20 people outside and they're taking pictures of the house and telling about how it's Starling. haunted. Yeah. <laughs> well, I told you I'd tell you about how I'm a ghost. Yes. Please. I had long hair, probably about as long as okay, yours. Okay. And I was on the patio that faced Fort King Street. And it's like a walled patio. Like, you, and you know, you couldn't see through the wall. And we were sitting up against the house, so you couldn't see us. And the ghost tour came up and we we're just being quiet to listen to what they would say. Sure. And as they were leaving, you know, um, <laughs> I poked my head up over the railing and I saw people turn and look and I popped down really quick <laughs> and I just heard a collective gasp of like, <gasps> we, and then like all of a sudden the group stops, they turn around and you hear them start talking about, and they're like, we saw something, we saw something, you know. No, 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 no. They said, we saw a blonde lady. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it, was, it, was a blonde, it was a blonde lady. We saw a blonde lady. Yeah. <laughs> The next week, like, I think they're talking about you, dude. Yeah, it was, so yeah. it's always like Friday. I'd get off work. I'd go out on the like the porch, you know, have a have a drink, whatever. Yeah. Um, and it was around dusk, you know, and that's the time that they do the tour. It was literally the next week. All of a sudden, the tour had changed, and they're like, "It has been said <laughs> that." On some nights, if you look into the second floor window yeah. and the patio, right. you can see the remnant or no. the vi visit, yeah. you know, of a blonde woman ghost in her wedding dress. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You know, like it was like one of those things that's like this dead it, yeah. bride <laughs> thing. And like Dude. my friend's just like, Dude, like, because I heard all the spiels and this was like the new development. They're like, yeah. Dude, you're the ghost. Yeah. You're yeah. the woman on the second floor. So, wow. I'm a ghost. You were that's the highlight my... of the tour, no, really. <laughs> the tours were great for that, yeah. but we, like, we did one for YPO. Uh, and it was like, oh, this is all fun and it's a joke and all that. And, and then, then you got scared. I got a little scared. <laughs> yeah. They were like, because, you know, I'm like just kind of making light of it. And she was like, oh, well, do you want to come up and do it? And uh, I'm like, no. <laughs> so it was like, we well, were supposed to be talking to this, like, you know, young girl. And I was like, oh, do you want to dance? And that thing went like, <laughs> like went off the. Yes. And so I was like, oh, well, you take it back. <laughs> well, it wasn't working. And every time they got close to me and I'm talking, it would start going off. And I'm like, get away. Stop. Yeah. This Ugh. is no longer funny to me. Oh, I don't dear. like this. I figured out um, there was a St. Augustine tour that I went on the ghost tour. And if you hold that radar, this is back when you had yeah. like, disposable cameras, you know? Oh, yeah. So you hold the flash down and it'll spike it. So I'd go into like a random uh, corner, set it off, and everybody nice. would run over with their cameras and start taking pictures oh, of a wow. random corner. And then you get the yeah. orbs in the photos when you right. develop them. Like, yeah. Those orbs are definitely <laughs> signs of ghosts. Did you know that those disposable cameras could be used as a makeshift taser? No. I could not believe how much power could come out of a little AAA battery. But our buddy Jason was like, yeah, let me show you. And, like, takes this camera apart. MacGyvered it. And he's like, taps it on me. He's like, spat. It's like, ah, like, literally burned my That's arm funny. That's like... who was with me when, I, when the ghost tourists came by and I became the ghost. 
No, I was with you. Oh, okay, whatever. I was either with you. <laughs> that was forever ago. When they said it's a blonde lady, or uh, when they changed the story. It was one of them. Yeah, for sure. Because I remember they were like, "It's a blonde lady," and I'm like, "Dude, I think I want to go to this the tree in the cemetery now." We'll go. Yeah. It's tickets hey, available. We got tickets. I, I might. <laughs> go to calamaystreet. dot org. I mean, <laughs> yeah, why not? Do, <laughs> Strap do they get on. drinks? Too? Do babies attract yeah. goats? Water. Maybe? I will. So speaking of drinks, I know that um, they... Did you say do babies attract ghosts? Yeah, that's an honest question. Do babies attract ghosts? <laughs> I feel like it would repel. They're yeah. so innocent and pure. Oh, I'm no. thinking like... They're, 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 like, they're like easier to like uh, take over. Well, you're already haunted by this sex. baby. We'll leave you alone. <laughs> yeah. um, so I know that uh, they signed off on like the special permissions for Ocala to have yeah. open container downtown. Woo! Mm-hmm. For events specifically, right. yeah. Uh, special occasion events. Yeah. When are we going to get to the point, do you think? Uh, when you is know, Friday and Saturday night going to be an event every weekend? Right. When are they getting to the point where we're going to have open container downtown? Is that I a Main Street need, initiative? It probably will end up being yeah. one. I think we just need to assess how it's going to go. Because to be fair, you kind of have to test these things out. Oh, for sure. But I will say it's very successful in other communities. Right. I think it's just, you know, one foot in front of the other. Yeah. Let's feel out the water first and then move it forward from I've, there. I've even, I've heard city officials saying like, oh yeah, we'd, we'd like to see that. I would love to see it. I just think of like when they have, you guys, because you, you have live music playing in the square often, yeah. you know, like not in a place, like the city pays musicians to play right. on the square, which is awesome. And that happens all the time. And, and it's free, and yeah. the square is beautiful. So I'm just thinking, like, yeah, it would be cool. Like, if you know, when you go to the villages, they just have those open. You just get a yeah. drink, and you just kind of yeah. walk around and enjoy the outside. Or you can enjoy your restaurants and your bars. So right. I'm like, man, that would be awesome. Or yeah. we went to, you know, Mount Dora and had, like, a little, like, oh, grab your, um, you know, what do you call it? Mimosa to go. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're just doing that while we're just stopping in little yeah. shops and all of yeah. that. And for shopping... But like, let's not kid ourselves. Right. As we, we get, as we, get like, more. we have a yeah. lot of restaurants and like good restaurants and bars downtown. But I think we're starting to see probably more, you know, hopefully like retail and shops and stuff like that. And it's just like, yeah, if someone's a little like loose, like they're going to be a little bit loose with Spend their pocketbook. Yeah. I think. For sure. Um, so I, I think from an economic standpoint, I'm like, yeah, man, that's a good thing, you know. Yeah. No, I, I like it. I know that there's people. I just didn't know if it was an initiative or, you know. I, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking like I'm hoping in the next five to seven years. Oh, that... I think sooner than that. Yeah, I, I, I think would way think sooner so. than that because you know our car show, which will be coming up in September. That was fun. Thank I you. I enjoyed that, and we'll have it again this September. It was 24th. huge. It's amazing too, and we you know we have the beer vendors out yeah. for like the beer garden area. This year, it's going to be more incorporated with the cars. Okay. But I think what we found out last year is that the bars wanted to participate really? as well, and so with the open container, you can go in, pay yeah. the businesses come back out, enjoy the event. So it's really beneficial to the restaurants, bars, and retail. Yeah, yeah I, I have know. my favorite spots where I'm like, oh, I they have a beer that I like. Yes. Tipsy has a drink that I like. Right. You know, if I could go grab one of those and take it out. And I, mean, I was just surprised that, like, you guys, like, took over, like, all of downtown. Yeah, we shut down all the streets. For the free, because it was like the whole square, <laughs> yeah. side streets, and then Citizen Circle mm-hmm. had the majority of the beer vendors and yeah. stuff like that. So I, I was... Much bigger than I was anticipating because, like, I went and you know, Nick and I went and uh, it was it was fun, but I was just Thanks. like, where does this end? We keep walking, there's more cars and more stuff and more things to look at. And... Yeah, it'll be bigger this year, bigger kids zone, more family friendly. So, is there an age limit on the kids zone? No, sweet. I, I love that we have the the Cal Market has the playground because when yeah. you threw the um, the Wiener Wars, mm-hmm. it was awesome because we get a drink, yeah. The, Kids are just playing, you know, like it was, I didn't have to like worry like, oh, all right, don't touch, you know, this, don't, you know, don't, don't run away. Like, oh, you have something there to do. So I think more space. Yeah. I think when I showed up, I was just like, yeah, JT's supposed to be here. And then yeah, like, yeah you were over at the playground. So yeah, just parents had convened over there and yeah. it was just kind of nice. Well, it's nice know. when it's fenced in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Have to monitor as closely as I, I would say I was I was like oh man it stinks that farmer's market's moving off the square and then like I just love its new location too yeah. it's, <laughs> it's shaded yeah and it just keeps growing so like yeah. it's creeping into citizens um yeah and... so I realized that one of the last times I went I was like oh what's this going on over here and I ended up walking down that whole like you know Osceola Greenway or yeah. whatever it's called the O-Track, yeah. the O-Track mm-hmm. um because yeah it, it did go all the way basically yeah. down to uh, citizen circle more yeah. or less so and we'll probably be doing more on like the 
second Saturday Shop Small initiatives that we started back last November, I think it was. Gotcha. And so hopefully we'll see more happening in the square and try to connect the two and keep people in downtown yeah, for longer, right? right? No, so, and awesome. an event ends and then it's like a ghost town. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, the, the market? Yeah, oh, anytime yeah. you have a big event in downtown. And so, right. you know, concerted down efforts down and trying yeah. to keep everybody downtown longer. I'm excited about the trolley idea. Yeah. I think that's great. I think ultimately I'd love to see some kind of uh, 40 transport to like say WEC, you know, and I know that's not a, it wouldn't be a, a Main Street initiative, but I just think that that would be great. One year for either Main Street or YPO, I can't remember, we did um, a bus system from HITS. Yeah. We're like, let's just try this. And it was just like full. And we're I just bet. bringing people to and from HITS. Mm -hmm. We did that for like a whole night. And it was just, it just, it was awesome. It worked really well. And I'm like, there's no reason, you know, I had a friend come and stay at WEC. He didn't have a car, right? He was just staying in WEC. Yeah. And he was like, man, it'd be really nice to, you know, like, I like being out here too, but I want to come downtown. I wish I could just, you know, just hop on a bus or something yeah. and get back and forth. Like so. Disney transportation. Yeah, but but I think <laughs> just to Midtown, like I said, baby stepping it, I think that's great. I'm really yeah. excited about that that concept. Is it like a hop on, hop off trolley? Yeah. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be great. So just like a route. Yeah. It'll just keep circulating, and then hopefully we'll be able to partner with, like, the Riley, the Max. and yeah, to where just, yeah. You know, if awesome. they have specific events, we'll time it around those, you know, That's the awesome. shows and things like that. So Yeah, especially if you're yeah. getting a second parking garage downtown, you know. I mean, it's – I don't have as much – I only park on, like, the north side now usually when I'm going downtown because, like, I also come from the north side. So it's right. like I'm not going to cross 40. I'll just park by Sayulita or Symmetry or something like that. And, right. you know, it's – I hate to blow it up, but I'm like, that's like where all the actual empty parking spots mm -hmm. are nowadays, like yeah. on the weekends. Like anyone who crosses 40 and tries to find it downtown, like good luck. I know. So, the Murphy lot is like my go-to. Is that, yeah, that's absolutely. Yeah. It, you know, and it's just like, I'm like, yeah, people haven't realized it yet. But soon I feel like they're going to start going over there. And once, I, you know, more yeah. businesses pop in over there, it's just going to, I think, right. blend together. Historical walking tour tomorrow. Oh, wow. Yes. Super excited for that. Yes. Uh, Haunted Thank you so tree. much for joining oh, us. Thanks for having me. It All was right. super fun. We didn't get to talk about Kung Fu, but that I know. we'll have to save that for another one. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. We did. There was so much good Ocala talk. We Give missed all the Kung, Kung Fu. Right now. Give it a few minutes. All right. I got to know. <laughs> I thought Kung Fu was like kind of nonsense. No. I thought it was like fake. Like Kung Fu Panda. Well, no, like... <laughs> well, those are animals. She said skadoosh. No, I thought that like it was one of those like non-practical forms of martial arts. You ever seen a Shaolin pretty... monk? No. Yeah, but China pushes it as if it's way more effective than it is. Like if you've ever seen someone fight Kung Fu versus someone that's like not fighting Kung Fu, no. it don't end well. But I want to know, it's like, legitimate. she looks like she's about to fight you. <laughs> but that's, no. Like, I mean, I just saw in her eye. I mean, she just gave That's why I'm sitting She just that. gave you a look, like, <laughs> so what right. form of kung fu did you train in? I don't know. Um, it was in Maine, okay? So it's like in this tiny town. There was only one studio that had like martial <laughs> I'm arts. I'm shocked it was, it was even fit. one. I know, yeah. me too. And so our parents signed us up. We also were doing like five other activities, you know, oh, as yeah. you do at the age of like 11 or 12. And I think I did it for six months and I was bored of it. And I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. I had gone to one tournament and I got first place. And nice. it was like the highest ranked tournament, I guess, in the state at that oh, time. Wow. So then when I stopped doing it I got a call when school came back in session and they're like hey uh you rank you're tied for fourth for the state like grand championship do you want to come and defend your like, title yeah basically and so I went in for a week and trained again and then I went I love that <laughs> and then I went and I in my head everybody was like if you just get third that will be great like that'll be great for our studio like yeah. Oh, so your studio is like yeah, really they, they like pushing, pushing you it, on yeah. this. Okay. No pressure, you know. And so I go and I do my thing. And I should admit that it's not in fighting; it's in form, which is okay. like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> because if you try to beat me up, I will like die. Yeah, <laughs> like right. I can't actually defend myself. But dance and choreography, I'm on point. Yes. <laughs> okay. But um, we did our thing, and at the end, they called me, congratulations, Jessica Nesbitt, my maiden name. Like. 
congratulations that I went up and I got my plaque or whatever and I leave and I'm in the car ride home and I'm like mom I got third place and she's like no honey no. like you were the state grand champion <laughs> you got first place, <laughs> got first wow. place. So, it was exciting and it's like one of those things that's like my go-to for two truths and a lie right. you know because nobody believes me right. like looking so at you me, like, but I just want to like you, yeah. you went up and accepted your award and you just thought all the time it was third, third place, place. Yeah. they're like why is she not more excited like she just is well, the grand champion I've only been doing this for six months. They didn't even wow. know who I was. Oh, that's funny. So, but that's yeah, awesome. that I is a great story. It. It is phenomenal. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> but it's like one of those great things that you can yeah. say, you know. Heck yeah. I'm glad that we went long to get that yeah. one out of you then. <laughs> sure. So thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Happy Friday, everyone.